What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back. Here to talk some more boxing. Wait for y'all to join. We're gonna talk about it. As soon as the notifications go out. You come in, smash the like button. What's up? Ego Damas was good. the like button. We're here to talk about it. <clears throat> Man, we're doing another stream right now. My allergies are fucked up. Hey, this allergy medicine is expensive. I got this. I got this, and I can tell it's not, it's different from a, like being sick and having allergies, because it's just allergy symptoms, really my sinuses and sneezing. Listen, we're going to talk about the Triple G situation, don't y'all worry about it. Shout out to J Dog. We had a shooter extraordinaire in the building. I'm waiting for Slow Ass YouTube to send these notifications to the gang gang. He already ran some errands. Went and got some allergy medicine. Got something to eat. Over I ran by the bank. I had to deposit some money. Um, I'm indoors now. Because <clears throat> it's. California is real bad, especially Northern California. It's super windy. I don't know if you guys, you probably can't hear it, but it's super windy and it's like blowing all of the shit. So that's why I'm doing another stream and depending on the engagement and stuff, because I do have some other stuff to do, other edits and stuff. That's going to determine how long this stream is. But I ran my errands earlier. I'm indoors because it's killing my allergies with all the wind and blowing shit in my face, pollen. I took stuff. I took Allegra. I did the Nasacort. Nasacort worked a little bit. Uh, Gerardo says, I didn't even get a notification. YouTube be hating on you, Ego. That's what I'm saying. We still maintain it, though. Yeah, YouTube got to fix it. We working. I got a Cherry 7 Up. It's been so, so long since I had one. So I was like, you know what? I want a Cherry 7 Up. Local honey. <clears throat> yeah, I need to get that. They have some at this vitamin store nearby. Got my hand sunny. Yeah, man. It's my <clears throat> it's weird too, cause last year, last last season or whatever, last spring, my allergies weren't there's was nothing. But nothing really going on. But it's like <clears throat> it's seasonal and some years are like way worse. And this is one of them. It's like this is crazy. I'm, <laughs> I'm not trying to be a baby. Like it's just annoying. It feels. It's. Have you ever had that feeling like you're about to sneeze? That's what it feels like. It's just like, like right here. 
That's the worst feeling. Like you have to sneeze. Then I was at Walmart. I hurt you. I hurt you. Probably annoying people and stuff. So we still mobbing though. We still trying to get this stuff done. The work don't stop. All the work don't stop. Damn, my timeline be popping. My timeline be popping. Yeah, man, we out here. Um, as I got older, mine got worse. See, that's what I'm saying. I was just weird like that. I might say the same thing for me. Like as I got older, mine got worse. Cause I don't remember it being super bad. Make sure y'all smash the like button because I don't know what's going on with the notifications. They hating. We making too much noise. They wanna they wanna limit us. They wanna limit the success of the channel. So we gotta we gotta prevent that. That's a good question from Gerardo. Well, I guess it's due due process or whatever. They have to hear Golovkin's side and then make their decide decision. Like he, I guess he wants. To. Let's just jump right into it. The people are gonna come when they come. I don't know what, what's up with YouTube and the notifications, but um. So this is the deal. Triple G, Abel Sanchez, probably Loeffler. And Derevinchenko, Lou, Lou DiBella. So basically both sides, long story short, both sides, excuse me, had a meeting. Both sides had a meeting, a hearing with the IBF to, and it was four and a half hours, they said on ESPN, four and a half hours to debate their side of the argument. So I'm not, I don't have the details or the transcript of everything that was said, but I, I, I heard about this, I've been following this. The, the basic gist of what's going on is Dervinchenko, he's a, he has an amateur pedigree, he doesn't have that many fights, he may be 14 and 0 or something like that, but he's undefeated, looks like he has good power based on who he, the people he's been in with, he's had some pretty good stoppages, Toriano Johnson, Deshaun Johnson, etc., right? And he's the mandatory. Once he beat, I think, Toriano Johnson, he became the IBF mandatory. Golovkin has had the IBF belt since David Lemieux won. You know what I mean? Because David Lemieux was the IBF champion. So Gennady had no guys, right? He beat David Lemieux. And then they had that eliminator. Toriano Johnson, I think, was in a couple eliminators with O'Keenan or some shit. And then, then the they had another final eliminator with Derevchenko. Derevchenko knocked out Toriano Johnson and became the IBF mandatory. Golovkin is the champion with the IBF. Now, we all know Golovkin was supposed to fight Canelo. So Derevchenko's people were basically saying, "Hey, we're the mandatory. We understood the Canelo fight because it's big money, so we didn't step in the way of that, right? It's a big money fight and it's a rematch to a controversial fight. But seeing how Canelo Alvarez tested positive for the clenbuterol, failed two drug tests in the tainted meat, and ultimately was forced to withdraw from the equation, that fight got canceled. And we knew it was headed that way because Canelo got temporarily suspended, then his hearing got pushed back, then the MGM properties were offering full refunds. I mean, these are all signs that the fight was collapsing, right? Box Fan Expo looked like they were canceling, you know what I mean? So the fight got canceled, Canelo officially withdrew at that little presser. Boom, Golovkin's without a dance partner. So their whole statement, their whole like, yeah, make sure y'all smash the like button. Dervinchenko's side, their whole stance is this. We were understanding of Canelo Golovkin. Big money fight, big fight for boxing, controversy in the first fight with the Adelaide Bird scorecard, right? So they were saying, now that that's no longer a thing because Canelo is withdrawn from the fight. We want our shot. We want our opportunity. Fight your mandatory. Triple G requested an exemption to not fight his mandatory, Derevchenko. 
in order to fight Vanas Matarosin. The IBF granted, they granted the exemption, said, hey, we'll let you fight Vanas Matarosin. But after that, you must fight Dervinchenko or you will be stripped. Can you guys hear me? Because the chat just completely stopped on my side. I don't know if anybody's in here. YouTube is tripping. Can anybody hear anything that's saying? Being said, I mean. Damn, the chat. I, it's weird because the chat randomly will stop. Like, normally it's an ongoing thing. But sometimes they just randomly stop. And I'm like, man, are people even in here? I guess people are just kind of listening to the story or whatever. Okay, I'm just making sure people are in here. I'm not trying to be speaking to an empty room. Because I could just do a regular video if that's the case. But anyway, um, Dervinchenko was basically, his side was like, yo, give us the shot. We're the mandatories. You need a dance partner. Canelo's out. Fight us. And Triple G got an exemption to fight Vanas Matarosin. But the IBF told him, okay, we'll let you fight this one fight because you couldn't control the Canelo situation. But you got to fight your mandatory or you'll be stripped, basically. Right? So that's where it sits. So now I guess Triple G, Canelo, we all know Canelo's selling shoes and he's probably going to be back in September, right? So now from my standpoint, Triple G wants that payday. He wants that get back, that, that big money fight with Canelo, which would further push off and piss on and piss um, back burner Dervinchenko. So they got to come to some kind of understanding. Dervinchenko don't want to move aside. He don't want step aside money. Ultimately, maybe he settles for step aside money, but at this current moment, he's saying he wants the shot. Same thing happened with Bermain Stavern and Deontay Wilder. Wilder was trying to fight Luis Ortiz. It was the bigger fight. It was the better fight for boxing. And Stavern didn't want to step out the way. He's like, I'm the mandatory. Fuck that. Fight me. I want my rematch. And ultimately, the only reason the Stavern 2 knockout and fight happened was simply because Stavern, I mean, Luis Ortiz failed that drug test. So his fight got canceled. So that's where we're at. They had a hearing for with Dervinchenko and his promoter and representative and Golovkin's side. From what I understand, it was almost five hours long, four and a half hours, and they discussed each side. I don't know what was discussed. I don't again I don't have a transcript of it or, or whatever. Um, and about next week we should get a verdict from the IBF as to what needs to happen next. Are they going to give Triple G another excuse, another exemption to fight a Canelo fight in September and make Dervinchenko wait? You know what I mean? It's, <clears throat> boxing's getting crazy, man. It's, 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 it's crazy. Like, I, I don't even like, I love the sport, but the politics cr are crazy to me. For example, <clears throat> If y'all want this example, can I get a hell yeah? I gotta know that y'all still with me. Can I get a hell yeah in the comment section? Like this, this is so frustrating when it comes to boxing, man. I gotta know y'all still with me. Can I get a hell yeah in the comment section? Okay, so some, a couple y'all still with me. Now, okay, this is a factual stuff. Tyson Fury beat Klitschko's ass, right? He beat him took his belts. One of them was the IBF. We all knew that, that Klitschko being the respected champion that he was, that there was likely that Tyson Fury was going to rematch him. And there's big money, good money involved for both fighters. So when Fury was was pursuant of a Klitschko rematch or, or it was like analyzed or known thing that Klitschko and, and Tyson Fury were going to rematch, the IBF immediately stripped Tyson Fury and took his belt. And said, hey, you didn't get to defend against your mandatory, whoever the fuck it was, Charles Martin or whatever. So we, we stripping you of it, right? So if you look at the IBF, that's some bullshit. Why did Tyson Fury get stripped immediately? He, Klitschko fight's a big fight, you know what I mean? That's a big money fight, you know what I mean? It's a big fight for boxing. It was probably the biggest heavyweight fight at the time. You know what I'm saying? So why did Tyson Fury, it was boring, but that's beside the point. You know what I'm saying? So why did you strip Tyson Fury? That You know, I don't understand little stuff like this. Why did the IBF strip Tyson Fury ASAP? ASAPolis. They just, give me that. 
girl, give me that. You know what I mean? It was on that Webby shit. Took the belt real quick. And then put it up for grabs for Charles Martin versus whatever, Glasgow, Glasgow or whatever the fuck. And then Glasgow turned into Nancy Kerrigan, hurt his knee or some shit. Tanya Harding and all that. And then Charles Martin became a champion and then Joshua knocked him out and took his title, right? So why did the IBF do that? Like, why did they strip Tyson Fury real quick? But then now when it comes to Golovkin, it, we, we're having hearings and shit. Like, why Why did you, why don't you treat him like you treated the gypsy? Treat Golovkin like the gypsy king. You know what I mean? Why, why does Golovkin get a hearing? Why didn't Tyson Fury get a hearing to, to plead his side? You know what I'm saying? So, again, I don't understand it. I'm not bashing anything. I'm just stating the obvious, really. Like, maybe someone has an answer. I just don't know. Make sure y'all smash the like button. I don't know the answer to it. Again, maybe there's some valid reason that you guys know of, but I don't know how that makes sense. How Tyson Fury couldn't pursue a Klitschko rematch, even though Klitschko was the longstanding champion. It's like favorites, you know what I mean? This boxing game, you know what I mean? You 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 want to you want someone to represent your belt who you want to rep. Just like with the uh, what's the name did whoever WBO or WBA did the rigging down, whichever one it was. They said, oh, if you lose to Lomachenko two divisions higher, we're stripping you. Why does he get stripped of his belt in a different division? Kel Brook didn't get stripped when he fought Golovkin. He got he got his eye busted out out the frame. The IBF let him keep his welterweight belt. You know what I'm saying? That's like the IBF saying, hey, if Golovkin knock your ass out, you ain't a champion at welterweight anymore either. Which would have benefited Kell Brook because then he wouldn't have had to fight Errol Spence Jr. if they just stripped him. But there was pressure on him to fight Errol Spence and we all know how that ended up. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just a lot of politics, man. I don't, I don't understand it. You know what I mean? Tyson Fury immediately stripped but Golovkin gets a hearing. Just fight Dervinchenko. Fuck the Canelo fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll go. I went to the first fight. It was cool. But it's just a lot of mess right now. You know what I mean? It's just a lot of lot to take on. Like, fights aren't supposed to be this complex. That's why, like, even the Joshua Wilder, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting a little bit uh, past it. Like, not saying I wouldn't watch it. Not saying it's not a great fight. But I'm just saying all the drama and the politics and the lies and deception like i'm just getting I'm, I'm becoming over it there's enough you know what i mean i'm just like i'd rather focus on mikey garcia robert easter or whatever fight you know what i mean the fights that can get made without this huge uh, pulling of teeth you know what i mean so i don't i don't really know but we're gonna find out shortly hopefully the ibf stays true i understand triple g and canelo is a big fight but I mean, Triple G, I told you, he's surrounded by tough fights. No matter how you slight, even the Canelo fight is a tough fight because Canelo gave you a first tough fight. The first fight was a, a tough fight. Even if you had Golovkin winning, he didn't look miraculous. Like, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like when he fought Macklin or Vonis Matarosin. Canelo did stand his ground in spots and, you know what I mean? Because to be honest, I'm just being 100. I was there live in the flesh. Live in the fresh, death row, west side, right? I was there. To be perfectly honest, neither one of them maximized their full potential. Neither one, neither Canelo or Golovkin looked as superb as they did in their best performances or even anything close to it. You know what I mean? Despite who you had winning, like, for example, you look at Triple G versus Vonis Matarosin and Triple G versus Canelo. You look at Canelo versus Kirkland or Angulo, and then you look at Canelo versus Triple G. So to me, they both could have did more. They both kind of held back and were too tentative in spots and, and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think either one of them really lit. It was a cool fight, but none of them lived up to their best performances or their typical style. Golovkin, hey, I'm not Mexican style. And Golovkin, I mean, I said Golovkin. <laughs> I'm making up fighters and shit. And then Canelo, he, he's the one with the combination punches and hand speed. He didn't get off as, as much as he normally does. <clears throat> so, yeah, they were both a little bit too respectful, in my opinion. 
And I know it makes you mad, but I don't care. Floyd is more skilled than all of these guys. Yes, I said it. Floyd Mayweather has more skill, pure skill. And I like Canelo and I like Golovkin, but it's the fact. Floyd Mayweather has more pure skill than both of them. No matter what you slice it, no matter, oh, but Canelo in the rematch will knock Floyd and Triple G if you fought him at 54. I don't care. None of what y'all saying. Pure skill, boxing skill, Floyd has more skill. Because the reason I even brought this up, because I know some of y'all are like, oh, you're a Floyd dick rider and all this dumb shit. The reason I brought this up is because what I just said, Canelo and Golovkin, neither one of them really floored it and put the pedal to the metal. The thing is, with Floyd Mayweather, you might do good for some rounds, but he always adapts. He, There's never been a fighter ever that I've ever seen him in. Any fight where he was just so taken out of his element for 12 rounds, where he looked like a completely different fighter for 12 rounds. Period. Raw Power, you about to get blocked. I got shooters on deck. You talking about snore. Explain. Don't just put no stupid shit and put snore because you don't want to hear it. That's what y'all do. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to hear it, so they 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 don't. It's not it's not even that they disagree. It's just snore because they don't want to hear it. Castillo won. Madonna won. Hey, box lobby. I, I, okay, I got a hot seat. Bruh, ego talk too fucking much. Big beard, have an ass. Hey, block him. His name is uh, Giovanni. I can't lose to a guy named Giovanni. I'm sorry. No, no boy named Giovanni. Ain't no Gio could beat me in the hot seat. Block his ass. Get him the fuck out of here. Who next? It's a, your name Giovanni. You trying to talk slick. Stop it. You sound like a fucking cologne. Pause. Hardcore rapper, but he's Geo. Fucking Giovanni Musk and shit. Anyway, I'm back on my bullshit. Y'all woke my game up. I got a hot seat too. This is how we doing it. Death Row East believing it. Motherfuckers named Giovanni think they can beat me in a hot seat. It's my game. I'm Thanos. Yeah. Yeah, you better walk away. Yeah. Yeah, Giovanni. Yeah, my name is Giovanni Ferre. Like, get that. Shut that soft ass shit up. I'm on my Broner shit. Shut that. Shut, shut that soft ass shit up. Giovanni Ferre. Fake ass cologne from the Dollar Tree. Fuck is y'all. Hold on. Y'all got me hyped now. I got a hot seat. I got to find him now. Where is he at? Okay, box lobby. Le okay. Box me in the lobby in this hot seat. You said Castillo won and Maidana won. What about them fights? Castillo and, and Maidana won? What, what about them fights? Huh? What about them? What, 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 what are you trying to say? Huh? You in the hot seat. Box lobby. Don't go quiet now. We got the hot seat for you now. Shut that soft ass shit up. Soft ass shit. Where box lobby at? Everybody type soft shit. He baby shit. He baby shit. That soft ass shit. You know when a baby eat too much Gerber? I'm in my zone. Y'all woke my game up. They were close. They could have gone either way. They, the Castillo fight was closer. Maidana lost. Maidana lost. He had, he did. The thing is, see, a lot of, a lot of y'all don't know shit about boxing. Because you guys don't, because I, I remember I had a channel back then. Shut that soft ass shit up. A lot of you guys don't give credit to anybody, so when a guy does better than you think or put someone in a tougher fight, then you guys are marveled because you didn't do the research on that fighter. I told people beforehand, and there weren't too many people. A lot of people thought Maidana was just going to get easily outboxed. Oh, he's too slow and flat-footed. Floyd picked another flat-footed Latino. I told you that Maidana was going to be a, a difficult fight because Maidana doesn't give a fuck. He came up in Argentina from gangs and shit. You know what I'm saying? He had a good trainer. He improved his cardio. He improved his jab with Robert Garcia. He has power. He was like the top three, a top three puncher at the welterweight division. He had just beat Broner, which is probably his biggest high-profile win. You know what I mean? So, 
I told people it would be a difficult fight because he exceeded your expectations because you didn't know shit about boxing, know how to break down a fight. Then all of a sudden, you people, they, they act like, oh, Madonna won. He didn't won. It wasn't no draw. It was he did better than people thought he was going to do. Period. End of. End of. You know what I'm saying? Castillo fight, that fight was close. I, I, I'll give you that. That fight was real close. But I don't care. Shut that soft ass shit up. Because Floyd Mayweather, mad style, got his rotator cuff worked on. He had a little surgery after the fight and fought him eight months later, the same exact year, and Castillo didn't do nothing with him. Castillo didn't do nothing with him. You had your opportunity, just like Kovalev. Deal with it. Just like Sugar Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran. Roberto Duran did his thing in that first, but he lost two other times after that. Best out of three, baby. Just like Rochambeau. Shut that soft ass shit up. Let's go, man. Y'all got me. I got my second win about me. Y'all don't know shit about boxing. So, anyway, you're talking about Madonna and Castillo. They, listen, Floyd is so good. They got to bring up fights from 15 years ago. 15, 7, I don't even know how long it is now. You know what I mean? They got to bring up fights from 15 years ago to try to condemn that man. Castillo was a tough fight. He got a rematch. It didn't do shit with him. You know what I'm saying? So, it is what it is. And then he got stopped by Ricky Hatton and Ruslan Provodnikov later in his career. So, I mean, he's not an overall better fighter long term. Floyd, in my honest opinion, wouldn't have got stopped by Ricky Hatton because he fought him. And he didn't get stopped. And in fact, he stopped undefeated Ricky Hatton. You know what I mean? And I don't think he would have got stopped by Ruslan Provodnikov. Tim Bradley outboxed him. And he fought like an idiot in that fight. You know what I mean? Fought on some Rambo shit. So once again, you could try your best to hate, but you can't you can't denounce these facts. You can't beat me at this game. And the real reason is because I know my shit. I know boxing. You say whatever other people say. That we'll see, we'll see how far that knowledge gets you when you just repeat your parrot. You know what I'm saying? Like, ooh, Castillo Madonna. Cool. He's Floyd's not invincible. You know what I mean? Fights are tough. Certain fights are tough. Cotto gave him a tough fight. Emmanuel Gus, see, and this is how I know, man. This is how I know y'all dudes is getting fucked up. And this is how I know that, like, a lot of times, I'm not saying you particularly with this, but a lot of times there's, like, racial undertones because Floyd has had tough fights with other people. You know what I mean? Demarcus Corley rocked him, right? Emmanuel Burton. But these same motherfuckers only bring up the Latino fighters. You know what I'm saying? The Madonna, Cotto, and then Castillo. You, you get what I'm saying? Why don't you bring up the Emmanuel Augustus fight? Floyd himself said that was his toughest fight. You know what I mean? We already know what time it is. Stop it. Stop it. Floyd just got more skilled than these dudes. And again, the reason I even brought Floyd up is because Golovkin and Canelo were out of element kind of facing each other neither one of them in the first fight put on they were kind of they were watered down their performances from what they normally do and what they're normally good at are watered down you know what i'm saying when we see triple g at his best he looks like he looked for savannah spada matthew macklin willie monroe right when we see him against upper echelon guys with you know what i mean with momentum and shit danny jacobs canelo he works behind the jab he can't get those same combinations off, right? When we see Canelo at his best, it's like the Angulo, one-sided beat down, beat the fuck up. Then has to get stopped, and he's and he's he's pulling punches. Any punch he can throw, he threw an uppercut from like the turnbuckle or something stupid, and and it still hit Angulo. And then the ref was like, "Oh fuck this," you know what I mean? When you look at the Kirkland fight, Styles make fights. You got to worry about different shit, fight Angulo than fighting Triple G. So um, the thing with Floyd is it don't matter who's in there. It could be De La Hoya, it could be Cotto, it could be Sean Bay Mitchell. He still makes the adjustments and finds a place in the fight to to kind of take over. And his skills, is he just, he's smart. Triple G is not, he's, he's offensively smart, but I don't think he's an overall ring IQ type of fighter. I mean, again, he's not like a Ruslan Provotnikov either. So, 
Yeah, man, these dudes, they try, <laughs> they try to say the same shit all... Ooh, what about Castillo? Who cares? Castillo had his opportunity. See, listen. Why, why, when it comes to Ward, Kovalev, Mayweather, Castillo, why don't any of these, the B-sides or whatever you want to call why don't they ever duplicate the same six at Madonna versus Floyd? Why, if they, if they had it in them, why don't they beat them again? You know what I'm saying? Just like Roy Jones, um, he beat Tarver, but I believe Tarver knocked him out in the second fight, and then I think he beat him again. I think Tarver beat him again the third time, but it was maybe a decision. You get what I'm saying? So Tarver wins the best out of three. He went just like the the Warriors are playing right now, best out of seven. You know what I'm saying? So why didn't Maidana do what he did in the first one? If he is the be truly the better fighter, why didn't Kovalev do what he did in the first Ward fight? Why were there no knockdowns? Why couldn't he get off the same? He said he improved his condition. He said he oh listen, see I'm, I'm schooling y'all cats, man. Y'all can't y'all can't fuck with this wreck. Kovalev said he thought he thought too much and he overtrained for the first fight, but then he got an Olympic triathlon strength and conditioning person. If you overtrain, why are you getting that? Why are you implementing that? Okay, so if you know you made a mistake by overtraining because Kovalev said something to the effect of, I thought Ward would be tougher, would be harder to deal with, so I overtrained for it. Okay, so now you could correct it in the second time. And what happened? You got knocked out worse. I mean, you, you lost worse than you did in the first fight. You got knocked out in the second fight. So it's like, why don't these fighters ever duplicate their success? You know what I'm saying? Just like, look at uh, Ron Gavril versus David Benavidez. He knocked him down in the first fight. David Benavidez got floored in that 12th round. But what happened when they rematched? David Benavidez pulled away, and he did it convincingly. Sor Rungvisai. Okay, the first fight was really close. I think I had it for a chunk. I was there. I was at Madison Square Garden. I think I ha I don't remember. But I think I might have had it for Chocolatito slightly. But what happened? Chocolatito got his second chance. His, he had an immediate rematch. He wanted it. And he got knocked the fuck out. Tong Po style. So wrong beside was abusing that man's ribs. He was grunting with every punch. So, I, I mean, I don't have no pity or sympathy. You get, you have your chance at redemption, vindication. Same thing with George Groves. The first fight was fucked up how it ended. You had a second chance to beat that man, Carl Frotch. See, this is off the top of the head, people. I can think of all these examples. Carl Frotch gave you, you knocked him down in the first fight. It was a tough fight. I agree it was a bullshit stoppage. But George Groves had his opportunity at Carl Frotch again. So, you have an advantage. You can watch tape, see everything you did right versus how you got caught and, and make adjustments. And what happened? Carl Frotch knocked you out cold in the rematch. The first one, the ref had you in a headlock. You were buzzed. But George Grove, his leg was folded, literally folded. And this that ends all the discussion. Carl Frotch was the better man. He knocked you into a yoga position. There's nothing else that could be said at that point. Give that man his props. Move on with your career like he's done. <laughs> You know what I mean? He's went on to beat Chris Eubank Jr. and stuff like that. World Boxing Super Series. Great. <clears throat> but when someone gives you that immediate rematch, I don't want to hear no excuses. If the outcome is the same as the first one, then that's your fault. Because you had an opportunity to beat him again. So what, like, what am I missing here? <clears throat> Madonna. You gave a brilliant fight held a good account of yourself versus floyd and <clears throat> did better but lightning usually doesn't strike twice you know what i mean and floyd was the better fighter same thing with carl frotch and george grove like you got knocked out in the second fight david benavidez beat you worse ron gavril worse than the first fight so to me it, i look at it like a series like a nfl nba series i mean best out of seven if you have a trilogy, if you have a two, you know what I mean? Best out of that. Look at even Pacquiao versus Marquez. Marquez knocked you the fuck out. He did something that neither one of y'all did. He wins that series because he he won that triumphantly when he fought Pacquiao the fourth fight. And I thought he was robbed in the third fight. So you guys were about neck and neck, 
but he he wins the series because he knocked you smooth the fuck out. Pacquiao, do do do. I was really worried for Pacquiao. He face planted. Anthony Joshua in the Bay, that's cool. Was he at the game? (sighs) Yeah, so when there's an immediate rematch involved, hey, duplicate what you did in the first fight. Simple. And if not, I don't want to hear about Castillo Maidana because you had your chance. You got an immediate rematch. Do it again. Simple. But you see the uh, the person who who won the con- who won controversially pull away. Same thing with this Canelo Golovkin. If Canelo convincingly wins, wins more rounds, then I'm gonna be like, cool. He's the man. He he he's the lead in the pack. If Golovkin beats him more convincingly, then he's the man. But you guys had the opportunity, especially in the media rematch. <laughs> Pacquiao got stretched. That was bad. <laughs> My man just texts me. Look. That man, Joshua, he in my neck of the woods. He out here in the bay. Yeah, Pacquiao got... Marquez was not playing. <laughs> so it said Curry cooking, harden up. <coughs> I, I should go catch the rest of this game. I just got on here because I'm not leaving the house. My allergies is too messed up. <laughs> Someone said Wilder's waiting outside. Wilder in the bay too. Hey, that would be dope. That would be dope as fuck if Wilder had him... Remember how Pacquiao and Floyd met at the Miami Heat game? That would be big if Wilder just popped up on him. But see, Joshua probably didn't say he was going to be at the Warriors game. He just went. But if he said it, you know what I mean? That would have gave Wilder maybe time to travel and get that. And get there. You know what I mean? Because I'm sure he got the money. He got like $2 million to fight Luis Ortiz. Fuck them cheating ass Warriors. You hating, blood. Anyway... So, bottom line with Triple G, uh, there's he's surrounded by tough fights. Good fights, too. Fans should be happy with the fights. I don't know what the IBF is going to rule, but we have to. We just have to wait and see. Like Floyd saying, we, we have to wait and see. I don't know. I don't know what, what's going to be decided, but, like, ain't no one man above the crew. You know that shit, like they said in Juice. I don't see how Triple G, I think Derevchenko is deserving of a shot, or deserving of a shot. <laughs> so it's say he gonna whoop your ass. <laughs> Yo, funny as shit. Shout out to Business Brains, $10 super chat. Ego out here spitting heat rocks on these casuals. Ego army stand up. Man, I'm glad y'all enjoy it. Man, Floyd has he has the most skill because these other dudes, it's just it's apparent. You know what I'm saying? Like Adonis Stevenson, he didn't I give him props for having heart, but he didn't look that great in the second half. For he has more experience at light heavyweight than Badu Jack, and he looked like he was in no type of shape. And people are like, oh, but Adonis is 40. Floyd was damn near 40 when he was fighting these motherfuckers. And being in shape was never an issue for Floyd. Was, he fought Canelo probably at, I mean, yeah, Canelo at 36, 36, 37. You know what I'm saying? So it's like Floyd, it, people 
when he like really walks away from the sport or is gone or something, maybe then people will respect him. But he's the blueprint. You know what I'm saying? He just he did it. He did that. And if you say otherwise, you like like this guy he beat up his wife, like all that extra shit. You, I mean that's cool, but you can't take away from his boxing brand and what he did for boxing. Warriors just took the lead. Yes. He beat up his wife. Woman beater, baby. <laughs> that motherfucker said woman beater, baby, like it was some good shit. <laughs> you like, like this guy? He beat up his wife. Woman beater, baby. Like, that is not some cool shit to be yelling. That motherfucker said woman beater, baby. You know, I don't know. It just sounded weird. Woman beater, baby. He's like, yeah, bullshit. Woman beater, baby. He's a woman beater. <laughs> like, hey, bro, you got to chill out. Ruben was tripping. Ruben, Ruben, he's like, I'm ready. My son, Robert, is ready. You guys like this guy? Beat up him. Like, out of nowhere. Where did that even come from? Like, I was watching that press conference dying because I don't know where the fuck any of that came from. He was like, I, you know what? I, I think maybe Floyd Sr. was heckling him or something, and it just set him off. But it was like literally there was no... See, I, I like a good segue. You know what I'm saying? If I had, I'm an Aries. I'm a planner, overthinker. So I like a little transition. Like, we can't be talking about, like, kids' parks and then talk about sex. The, when I'm thinking about kids' park, I'm not trying to think about sex. Got to be some kind of segue transition. You know what I mean? And Ruben didn't have that. He was just like, he's like, <clears throat> we're prepared. I'm ready. My son Robert is ready. He's like, I am what I am. You guys like this guy beat up his wife? Like, what the fuck? Where that, <laughs> like, where did that come from? Woman beater, baby. Bullshit. That's bullshit, baby. <laughs> like, that motherfucker was tripping. Y'all ready for this gang gang, this ego merch? Hey, hey, hey. We gotta do it up, ego style. I, I'm gonna have y'all right at these fights. Bars. I'm gonna have y'all right at these fights all night. Oscar was hella, he was hella embarrassed. He said, like, okay, okay, Ruben. Okay, thank you, Ruben. How Oscar gonna be embarrassed? He losing lawsuits at the utensils. What you embarrassed for? Okay, he's like, okay, Ruben. Okay, thank you. <laughs> that man was hella mad. You beat up his bullshit, baby. <laughs> that motherfucker said his bullshit, baby. <laughs> Ruben is hella funny. That shit is funny. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens with Golovkin. I, I really don't know, but. All I do know is the middleweights are knocking. Days are knocking. Ego, you should be a comedian. <laughs> Y'all crazy. Hey, bro. The middleweights is coming. Hold on. We got a new song. Let me turn it down. <clears throat> Y'all ready? Give me a countdown. No, fuck it. Let's go. One, two, middle way. Hold on. One, two. How are we going to do it? One, two, the middle's coming for you. Three, four, you better lock your door. Five, sickness, bread, and cruise. Uh, like, them middleweights is coming. You got Charlo. He's like, where Triple G at? Like, that's the first thing he said after I was there. Then, like, first thing he knocked out Hugo Santino, bring on Triple G, yeah. Like, <laughs> like he, <laughs> on some show enough from the last Dragon shit, he was like, yeah. He could plead. Catch his bullets with his teeth. He could plead. The good boy catches bullets, catches punches with his face. He could please. Yeah. Remember when Bruce Lee were punched him and he was like, <laughs> Just squeezing his hand and shit. Then you got Dervinchenko. He, he want that work. Boo Boo Andre want that work. Billy Joe Saunders like, I got me pinned. I want a couple things me way. <laughs> like, he got the, he got me pinned and 
call them triple G string. Uh, 168, you got Gilberto Zuda Ramirez. You got Danny Jacobs, once at Brownsville, never ran, never will. Already gave Golovkin a tough fight. You got Canelo, which is a tough fight. Now, see, I can't wait, man. Boxes is such a good spot. New media, we talk tonight. We work so hard for this. Boo Boo Andrade ain't too relevant no more. When will when was his last fight, bro? See, Birdo. Now I gotta do you like Mayweather did Birdo. You go I gotta take you to school, boy. Listen. All of that would be fine if Triple G just did not just fight Vonis Matarosin. You can't say when is the last time Andre fought when A, Andre beat Vonis. And two, Andre, you're saying he's irrelevant. He actually fought more times in the last two years than Vonis did. I don't care if it's late notice because Andre said he wanted that work late notice. So at the end of the day, it, that's an excuse. That is a pure, full-fledged excuse. If Andre is irrelevant, see, if, if he, okay, if he was the only one that was irrelevant, then I'd be like, fine. But the man just fought a guy two years off the couch who's not even, hadn't even moved up to 54. Andre had already moved up to 60 and already had a fight with a guy who's 6'5". And he won and hurt him in the first round. I'm not saying it was like the best middleweight, Alan Tez Fox. I'm not saying it's like a world beater, but it was a big guy for the first time in a new weight class. So that's already out the window because Triple G elected to fight a 54 pounder off a two year layoff. So if, if you can't say, oh, Andre doesn't deserve it, he's irrelevant, because Vonis lost to Andre and he's fought less frequently than Andre in the last two years. M Munguia versus Boo Boo. I don't know. I mean, Munguia, he, he seems tight, but he really came he came out of nowhere. He came out of... Bro, you sound silly, bro. He says, push that movement. You push it on your channel. How about that? I, I'll do what I do on my channel, and you push that on your channel. You know what I mean? We're talking... Munguia is right now a champion at 54. So why are we talking about pushing a fight between a 54 pounder and a 60 pounder. You're a casual, bro. Either that or maybe, I don't know, maybe you know Munguia or you're just rooting for a Hispanic fight. I don't know, you tell me. You know what I'm saying? Why would I push a, a 54 pounder versus a 60 pounder? Yeah, Munguia's big, so he could probably move up to 60. But like, see, a lot of y'all don't know shit about boxing. That's just what it is. Just, just stay in your lane as a boxing fan, like whatever level you are. You know what I'm saying? But why why would I push a fight between a 54-pounder and a 60-pounder? And at the end of the day, Munguia just beat... He beat a, wel a welterweight. Or as Keith Thurman would say, a welterweight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Saddam Ali is not the biggest 54-pounder. We all knew that. But Saddam Ali did good versus Kodo, who also isn't a huge 54-pounder. Now, he's decent size if you're Floyd Mayweather, who's not a true 54-pounder, or Saddam Ali, but he's not, in comparison to this generation's 54-pounders, the top five guys, he's nowhere near the frame of those guys, right? And that's who Jaime Munguia knocked out. Props to him. He became a champion, put, it, put his cap in the hat, made a name for himself. But you can't get gas. Let's see how he looks versus Liam Smith, at least the guy we've seen in there with Canelo. A guy who fought um, at 54 before. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Munguia versus Jared Hurd. That's that's the that's the fight. Two 54 pounders and two big 54 pounders. That'll show me something. But Munguia, he just he just kind of made his mark for the first time. Nobody was talking about no fucking Munguia just a month ago when Triple G was trying to fight him. And now because he beat Saddam Ali, that's good. That's good for him. But at the same time, he has to keep keep showing and proving. You tell me to push Demetrius Andre at 60 versus Munguia. Casuals, man. No, we don't have to see Hurd versus Charlo first because they're all champions. They're able to all be a unification. 
So it don't matter. I don't care how the universe. No, listen, I'm like, I met Munguia's barber, cool ass dude. He's the one that put me on and told me to check for him. And I like what I see from Saddam Ali. This is no shade. But y'all get gassed up off single performances. That was good. That was a good starting point for his career and, and got people's eyes peeled and got people checking. But this is boxing, keep in mind. Saddam Ali just beat Kodo and hurt him. And people counted him out totally in that fight. But then his first title defense, he loses to an unknown guy. So boxing is fickle like that. But people like you get all hyped up. Oh, Munguia! Munguia for president! Like, chill. Let's see what this kid got. He's only 21. He has room for growth. He's showed and expressed an interest in wanting to fight the best. That's a good starting point. They're trying to line up a summer fight with Liam Smith. Cool. Let's, you know what I mean? Let's take it from there and let's get it cracking and see, see what it is. But, I mean, just to be act like Munguia just beat charlo like that i mean that's these are his levels to this shit i mean because realistically i would have favored charlo to beat saddam ali you know what i mean i would have favored if, if jared heard just beat edislandi lada then i would have to favor him to beat saddam ali too because he was the most undersized guy there period and I understand he hurt Kodo, but again, Kodo's not the biggest guy. Kodo's been through wars, and then Kodo's also had a lot of inactivity. Charlo and Hurd ain't been inactive like that. No. Why would... Berto, you're making yourself look more and more casual. Please stop. Munguia was moving up, to be honest. Thought Munguia was moving up. Why would he move up if he just became a champion at 54? What, what kind of sense? And why would he be calling out uh, Swift Hurd and Charlo and all this if he wants to move up. Bro, stop. Yeah, Hurd is I think he would have been way too big for Ali because he and he, he has the style because he, he has a style similar to Munguia. Big dude and a lot of pressure. And we've seen Edislandi Lada who has a better defense than Saddam Ali, I would say. And we've seen Edislandi Lada get dropped from the Battle of Attrition. Y'all gotta watch this sport, man. This is a beautiful sport if you pay attention. <laughs> yeah, listen. I, I like Munguia. Keep it up. I'm, I'm looking forward to that Liam Smith fight. I might even go to that. I see. I support good shit. I like what I've seen from him. But, see, boxing is so fickle, man. It's just a lot of emotion. You know what I mean? That's cool if, if you're from Mexico or something and you're like, yeah, Munguia, I'm from Tijuana too. That's cool. But you got to put shit in perspective. You know what I mean? And ultimately, this was just a starting point. Nobody was talking about Munguia four months ago. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's too early to tell what he's talking about. You know what I mean? But so far, he passed the eye test. So let's just keep up, keep it up. Ain't no rush. He's only 21. But y'all be like, oh, Mogoya, Mogoya, Mogoya. Like, stop it, bro. Dude, Munguia is not ready for any top 54 pounders right now. See, and the other thing is, Saddam Ali, he got hurt early. I didn't say I'm from Tijuana. I said, that's cool. I'm saying fans. Like, sometimes fans have these, these affinities or connections to a fighter. Like, oh, I'm from Tijuana. I didn't say I'm from Tijuana. I didn't say I'm from TJ. Y'all got to learn to keep up. But anyway, um, the thing, Sanam Ali got hurt in the first round. And his legs look pretty shaken up by it. So I don't even remember significant punches that he threw. But Hurd and, and Lada... Even if they get hurt, they, you know what I mean? They've probably been hurt in sparring. So they just got more experience. So we don't know what Munguia, he's big, but we don't know what his chin's like. How, how do we know that from the Saddam Ali? That's why y'all, this is why y'all, listen, straight up, this is why some of y'all be so wrong all the time. Because you listen to HBO and ESPN and what these promoters are talking about instead of just allowing it. Like even Lomachenko, 
Lomachenko, y'all was giving him these props before he even beat the people he needed to be to the point where we could start considering him higher. You know what I'm saying? You guys were saying after he beat Jason Sosa that he's untouchable. That don't mean nothing. Jason Sosa, and I mean, no disrespect to Sosa like that, but that doesn't really show us ultimately. But he kept beating the Rigondeaux, and now he's beating uh, Lenadas by stoppage. Made Rigondeaux quit. Okay. You beat Wall. Okay. You showing me something now. You know what I'm saying? But y'all just be Chocolatito. Munguia. Beefy. Like, beefy? Like, stop it, bro. You're talking about Lee Selby is the um, Welsh Mayweather, and then he just lost. And he arguably lost to Eric Hunter. Got knocked down in the whole shit. Y'all don't know shit. I'm talking about, it ain't no, you ain't even the Welsh Jeff Mayweather. What are you talking about? How you the Welsh Mayweather? Where did that come from? Somebody explain that. Where did that come from? How, how, who who said that's it? Lee Selby? Uh, uh, wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna call you the Wilson Mayweather. That's it. Like who 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 decided that that he was the anything Mayweather related? You know what I'm saying? You're not even the Welsh Milton Bradley. Like what are you talking? <laughs> what are y'all talking? What the f man? I don't, I'm at a loss for words for the first time in a long time. Like. Where did that come from? Welsh Mayweather. Who said that? Who decided? Wait, 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 wait. That's it. Lee Selby is a Welsh Mayweather. I love it. Like, where did that come from? What did, I don't, I never seen any synonymous behavior, style. Like, where, where did this Welsh Mayweather come from? Like, I really don't know. I have no idea who said that. Triple G is better than Wilder. That's what's up. Tell him to fight. Tell Triple G to fight Wilder. Then. <laughs> like, fuck it. Wales. It's from Wales. He's from Wales. Welsh. But that's what they call him. The Welsh Mayweather. You said if he knocked Liam out, which Canelo couldn't do. Do y'all watch boxing? Canelo stopped Liam Smith to the body in like round nine or ten. I think it was round nine. This is off the top of my head. What are you talking about? Canelo didn't stop Liam Smith. He said if Canelo couldn't stop him, he stopped him. Liam Smith was rolling on the ground. What do you, do you guys watch boxing? That Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the only one that watches boxing nowadays. I don't really know. How do I know the round number, how it happened, how it was, no Wikipedia, no Encyclopedia Britannica, no Google, and I just know this. And y'all be so confident when y'all type this. If Liam Smith didn't get stopped by Canelo, he did get stopped by Canelo. What are you talking about? Anyway, man, Canelo hit him with that, that Clint Clint body shot. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Yeah, Canelo dug to the body. That was that was a nice body shot. Now, like I said, Jaime Mugia is only 21, so if he could stop Liam Smith early, that's cool. Like, you know what I mean? That I, I could I could dig that. <laughs> These comments are so out of pocket. Someone said Liam Smith, he shit his soul out of his ass. I was born. Roydy, Canelo, hey y'all tripping. <laughs> hey, I'm about to. Is the game still on? I'm about to catch this end of this game. I just want to talk to you guys about the Triple G before things start getting weird. Oscar already signed Munguia. Quiet is kept, to my knowledge. All right, I'm about to catch the end of this game. I might do another live stream or vampire stream check it out but uh for triple g it's gonna be i'm anxious to see what the next move what they rule because it, it's not fair that these guys work hard to get ranked and then they go through all these processes and eliminators and 
the rules aren't kept. That's why when Keith Thurman vacated his belt, I was happy. Not happy because I like to see champions give up their belt. But if he's unfit for competition, one monkey don't stop no show. And I'm not calling him a monkey like that. It's just a saying. Because I know, oh, he goes racist. He's racist. You know what I mean? But um, the show must go on. You know what I mean? So we can't let a welterweight hold two belts and he's not able to compete. Now, how's that fair? Errol Spence won at it. Danny Garcia wants his belt back. Sean Porter wants a belt. You know what I mean? He's a former champion at welterweight. You know what I mean? So I'm with it. Who is Steve Fox? I don't even know who that is. That Rick Fox got a son that boxes? <laughs> I don't even know who that is. Hey, I don't know you beat. I don't know you lost to. AJ really in Oakland? I should drive out there. <laughs> if I could get in the backstage. Like, what's good with the 50 mil, bruh? Hey, bruh, man, we in the town, bruh. What's, what's good with the 50 mil? He'd be like, 50 mil, it's mod. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. AJ, take that fight, that Wilder fight. I never heard of Steve Fox, to be honest. I I'm checking for Josh Kelly, though. Yeah, I'm 30 minutes away, but it's a playoff game. I don't have no pass to the playoff game. How am I going to get back there? Hey, I'm a YouTube. I'm a YouTube sensation, man. It's like, they're going to let me up. Steve Fox will beat Kelly easy. I got to see that. I don't even know who he is, and I like Josh Kelly. Steve Fox is from a video game ego. <laughs> that don't even sound like a fight. That's what I'm saying. That sounds like something like, but like one of them, it sounds like a video game, like like Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm Steve Fox. I'm your captain. Star Lord and Steve Fox. That doesn't even sound like no real person. Steve Fox. Who the fuck is that? J.D. Fox's brother and shit. Who the fuck is it? Oh, he was trolling? I mean, I don't care. I'm about to go watch this game. Anyway, holla at the kid. Let me know what you guys think. Smash the like button. I'll be back. <laughs>